Welcome to Cities of Tufts Lectures, a free live event and video podcast series where we explore the impact of urban planning on our communities and the opportunities to design for greater equity and justice. I'm your host, Tom Llewellyn. We're switching things up a bit for today's show. Our planned speaker, Yasmina Bibijan, was unable to present last week. So we're using this opportunity to take a deeper look into Cities at Tufts as a whole with an extended conversation between myself and Professor Julian Ajiban. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll discuss Julian's path to Tufts University, the genesis of the Cities at Tufts Colloquium, how the speakers are chosen, highlights from the past few years, and what's coming next for this open education program. Hey, Julian. Thanks for uh, joining us for Cities at Tufts and being in the hot seat for once. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> so just was wondering if you could kind of just start by talking a little bit about where your interest in urban planning came from, kind of how this led to your career. Well, Tom, I started um, as a basically as a geography teacher um, up in the English Lake District in a city called Carlisle. And what I was really doing was taking kids out into the National Park and I was doing very kind of green work, if you like. And for a few years, that was quite satisfying because my first degree was geography and botany. I was a biogeographer and ecologist. But an opportunity came up in London in 1985 to work at what was called an urban study centre. So it's like the urban equivalent of a field study centre. And uh, it just rocked my world. All of a sudden I realised that, you know, a love for the environment wasn't enough. We needed policies and planning, um, especially in our cities, that really took account of issues of equity and social justice. You can't look at urban field work or urban street work without understanding that some areas are better served by buses, some have more trees, some have more green spaces. And those are usually linked to issues of uh, race and class. And so this really, I think, got me into thinking about cities uh, in a different way to ways that I'd been trained as an ecologist. And it really went on from there. I did a, a master's degree, I did a PhD, um, and, and got very involved in urban planning. And part of the rationale as well is that, you know, the urban is the home for a majority on our planet and will continue to be that. Yeah, and, and how did you get to Tufts? So I, um, I was running my own consulting business in London uh, in the early 90s, really riding the wave of the highly successful, um, if you want to call it that, 1992 Earth Summit. So there was a flurry in Britain in the early 90s of local governments wanting to know about sustainable development. What does sustainable development mean at a local level? So I was doing a lot of training work with a, a whole bunch of friends of mine. Um, and I also was just finishing my PhD at the University of London. And I thought, you know, it'd be nice to have a year um, to go and teach in an American university just to see if I liked it. And I taught at a little school called Slippery Rock University of Pennsylvania, just north of Pittsburgh. And I decided I liked it, but it was only a one-year contract. And then two jobs came up. One was um, in Vancouver at Simon Fraser University, and then the other one was at Tufts. Um, and when I saw the job description at Tufts, I thought, somebody wrote this job description for me. Um, I mean, it was literally everything that I wanted. And 23 years on, I still think that way. Uh, I'm still invigorated by uh, and excited by the, um, the job that I have and the potential that it still has. Uh, so, so that's how I got to Tufts. Um, and I'm now a professor in urban and environmental policy and planning. So I've got the best of both worlds, really, urban and environmental policy and planning. I guess at a certain point in time in your career, you get to chart your, your path a little bit more than maybe you did earlier on. Yeah, well, I think careers are in part serendipity as well. Being in the right place at the right time, that phone call from somebody, uh, careers are a bit like that. So when I was a, a kid or when I was teaching high school geography 40 years ago, this, this year, um, 
did I know that I was going to be a professor of urban planning? No, I didn't. But in in many ways, my interests and skills have taken me to this place, and uh, I'm very comfortable here. And it seems like that's part of the path that led to the development of cities uh, at Tufts. And I'm wondering if you can just kind of speak to the genesis of this program and then kind of how it has evolved into this colloquium. Yeah, well, first, let me just say a little bit about the Department of Urban and Environmental Policy and Planning at Tufts. I mean, so I came in uh, June 1999 and it was much smaller, about half the number of faculty that we have now. Um, it was much more European focused, uh, uh, sorry, much more <laughs> US focused. And, um, you know, I was the only quote unquote uh, international academic. Um, I was also the only uh, academic of colour um, who was tenured, if you like. Um, we're a much more, we're a much bigger department now and a much more diverse department. Um, but we've always had a very strong vein of social justice uh, and equity um, as part of uh, urban planning. And so what I've done through my presence and being chair for six years and then being chair next year when I go back in January, what I've done is really deepened that commitment to social justice and equity. We have now a faculty that is much more uh, reflective of America today uh, a third of our tenured faculty are, um, sorry, 40% of our tenured faculty are faculty of colour um, and over 50% of our faculty are uh, women. So, and, and of the non-tenured faculty, um, a third of our faculty are people of colour. So it's a very much more diverse, um, complex department and Really, the idea for Cities at Tufts came from um, a very inspiring program at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, I was over there as a visiting professor, and I got to understand how they had um, crafted a, a, a transdisciplinary um, program called Urban at UW. And so we at Cities at Tufts are, in a sense, aiming to be one day more like that, which is a very uh, well-structured program. Uh, but the focus of Cities at the Tufts, really, is, is, um, is several fold. One is to provide a platform across the university for researchers who are doing urban research of any kind, urban psychology, urban economics, urban childcare. Um, to provide a platform for that, um, and then second, to provide a speaker series to speak to some of the issues that, that urban planning students especially have concerns about. Now, when Cities at Tufts started pre-COVID, it was all in person. So we had a very limited number of people that we could bring in mm -hmm. and we had a limited audience. It was just Tufts students. But the combination of COVID and having to go online with the Cities at Tufts colloquium and then... Uh, our relationship um, with UEP and Shareable really brought us to a much bigger audience and really now has provided a convincing rationale to keep the colloquium online because we can just bring in so many people and so many more people than we could if it were in person. And I'm wondering, can you speak a little bit to the, you know, you spoke to giving a platform providing an, an in for um, for both for you know urban planning urban design um, practitioners and researchers to be able to speak to, to audiences in ways that may not be able to find audiences but also for new audiences to be able to find this information um, you know beyond just uh, those that might be students at Tufts or students of any university and I'm wondering if you can speak to a little bit about um, yeah so that kind of desired impact that the program is having you know on the field as a whole sure well you know let me start by saying uh, anybody who looks at the now three seasons of uh, cities at tufts uh, broadcasts will notice that 
predominantly the speakers are speakers of colour. This was a conscious decision of mine um, for several reasons. One is that, I mean, so we are the number one masters only urban planning programme in the United States, according to Planetism magazine. And we've always had that cutting edge. Um, our founder, Herman Field, uh, before he, he passed, said, don't let UEP lose its cutting edge. And I intend to hold him to his word. Um, so bringing in speakers whose voices are perhaps not heard as much, I think is really important to us. Um, we've brought speakers in who are big names. We've brought speakers in who nobody knows their name. And I think that's the beauty of the uh, output that we've had. In terms of reaching out beyond our students, it's been a great success. We have practitioners, we have uh, retired people who are just curious about the topic. We have um, people overseas uh, coming to our, our, our broadcast directly. And I'm sure that our podcasts and recordings are recorded by many other people. So, so we're now building up, a, I think, a bank of resources on hot topics at, but coming from voices that are not necessarily heard as often as uh, the louder voices, if you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think you just spoke to that very well, but good examples of that is, you know, having Kate Raworth come and speak and talk about donut economics and the work that's happening around the world. Uh, you know, and then also having somebody like Rashad Williams, you know, who is an up and coming academic talking sure. about models of reparative planning and looking at, uh, you know, what crisis, anti-racism and reparations can look like in cities like uh, St. Paul and Minneapolis and sure. can go really focused and also be really broad and draw in lots of different audiences, but also be able to convey many different aspects of, of urban planning and design, uh, you know, to audience of, audiences of all kind. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and if I were to pick out, you know, a highlight, it was uh, getting Kate Raworth uh, to, to, to do a fantastic presentation uh, on donut economics, which really fits very well with my concept of just sustainability. This idea that we mustn't transgress the environmental ceiling, but we also mustn't let people fall below the social foundation. So that space between the ceiling and the floor is this notion of just sustainability or the donut uh, of a safe, an op a safe operating space, a regenerative operating space for humanity. And I think there's it's an example, you know, a great example of, and that was an early on talk. You know, I think sure. we had that back in the first season. Um, you know, but there's there's been a lot of really amazing guests, and I'm wondering if you could just speak to any other ones that kind of um, kind of raise the top in your in your memory. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I was I was trying to look at the the list there because there's so many of them, but I can't do it because yeah. it's going to light up my eyes so much. It, you know, to pick out favorite moments would be uh, it, it just wouldn't work. But we've had you know everyone like like you say. I mean, at the moment, I'm thinking so much about the work that Rashad Williams has done and how it coincides with my work about the shift from racial planning to reparative planning. Um, and what we're finding is that there are good examples of Evanston, Illinois, for instance, looking at reparative planning in terms of housing policy. Um, Minneapolis is looking at its parks, its fantastic legacy in parks, in terms of increasing access to those who were denied access. And so... Um, what we're seeing is cities are starting to shift on a piecemeal basis towards reparative planning, but we've yet to find where is the city where the paradigm has shifted. We are going to change our whole urban planning effort towards reparative planning. That's the goal. So that was a, a highlight. Um, uh, early on, Dean Sater from uh, University of Denver talks about intercultural urbanism, which again is very similar to my idea of just sustainability. Um, you know, um, 
people talking about punitive cities, how cities can be punitive. Um, it just, what I think really impressed me most is how um, synergistic all of these ideas are. Everybody is starting to think towards the same goal. They have different methodologies, perhaps different foci, but really the, the, um, the focus in all of this work has been how do we move towards the more just and sustainable city? You know, that's the, the, the millennial challenge. And I think the other thing that's really stood out for me is just how, you know, much of a global issue this is. This is not just something that's happening in the United States. You know, as we have heard from speakers, you know, that are working in the favelas in Brazil, you know, that yeah. are trying to tackle gentrification in Barcelona, uh, yeah. you know, that are many different things across the United States, uh, thinking about uh, seven generation cities and, um, and kind of what uh, kind of sacred civics might look like, you know, uh, pulling from Jane Ingle's work in, in Canada. Uh, so it, there is a global perspective that starts to come together. And I think that's really uh, important, I think, for, for students that are st having this, getting to hear these voices of people that are, that are addressing these issues um, globally. But I think also for practitioners. And that's one of the things that stood out uh, to me is just all the different people that are participating that are showing up to attend these seminars you you have people that are um, community organizers that are mm. trying to figure out ways to address gentrification in their communities you have uh you know noted uh people that are working in mobility and transportation you know like um robin chase you know who co-founded mm. zipcar attending these sessions to be able to increase mm. her education and, and understand and, and, what's going in the field and Charles Brown talking about arrested mobility, uh, which yep. is a, a fascinating concept. Um, yeah, so all of these people, I think, have been really, uh, you know, contributing to a, a very rich archive of critical, cutting-edge uh, urban planning work. And, and again, I think what we're trying to do, Tom, is to rework a narrative um, for urban planning that is much more inclusive than it has been in the past. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, in the 60s and 70s in urban planning, there was the movement for equity planning, but it really was led by enlightened white chief planning officers rather than being more ground up um, in terms of, you know, the reparations movement, uh, Black Lives Matter movement. These movements are starting to develop a new narrative and I think this is one of the things that we're capturing in cities at Tufts. And on the on with the desire to kind of stay on this cutting edge like you were saying you know are there dream guests that you haven't had on uh, that you are hoping at some point in time to be able to come and and speak uh, as part of the colloquium? Well there's always uh, <laughs> there's always uh, other people yeah and I mean some you know, are people like uh, Professor Robert Bullard, who I do know, but he's exceptionally busy. He's the father of environmental justice. Uh, I would love to interview um, um, Boston Mayor uh, Michelle Wu because her um, climate change, her food justice, her urban planning agenda really reflects my just sustainability ideas. Um, it would be nice to perhaps have somebody like Secretary Buttigieg uh, to talk about uh, freeway removal and the, um, the funding for the so-called Reconnecting Communities program, because this program is a reparations program. Uh, perhaps the government doesn't use that phrase so much, but, you know, if we want to heal communities, if we want to reconnect communities by taking down freeways, then... That is an act of reparation. Yeah, I think it's, uh, those would all be amazing guests. And also there's some pretty wonderful guests that are coming up, you know, in the spring semester of, you know, of 2023, you know, folks like Andrea Roberts at the University of Virginia, you know, who is a planning historian, theorist, and public humanities scholar, you know, who has 
um, was the founder of the Texas Freedom <laughs> Colonies Project. Uh, you know, you've got uh, Vikas Mehta coming from University of Cincinnati, um, you know, who um, is focused on kind of urban streets and the heterogeneous, multicultural, multigenerational and multi-use public space that streets can and and maybe should be. Uh, you know, the list goes on. Steve Kaddish from from Harvard, Asim Inam from Cardiff. Uh, and so the. The program, I think, is is continuing in an exciting direction, and I, I think that we'll be able to get to bringing in some of those speakers that you referenced. Oh, t totally. Well, you know, I mean, I know you're going to ask me, you know, how do you choose guests? Well, yeah. they're all they're all FOJs, friends of Julian, <laughs> uh, and this is payback time. Um, <laughs> no, these are, these are all friends, and. Um, in our network, we have a kind of reciprocal agreement that, you know, you do this for me, I'll do the same for you. And so we are elevating voices of urban planning academics, urban design academics like Vikas and Asim, who, again, I'm not saying we wouldn't be heard, but we want to be heard on our own terms. And so... So we are elevating each other's voices, I think, uh, in this process. Yeah. And that's an, an, a really important aspect of, of strengthening the field. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it includes the lifting up of these voices and providing this information to the next generation of urban planners. Sure. Uh, both very key kind of aspects of that. And kind of speaking of, of providing a, a platform and help, you know, allowing people to speak on their own terms and be heard and kind of amplifying that. Um, what if you can just kind of speak a little bit to how this partnership with shareable has been able to kind of increase the reach and impact of cities at Tufts? Yeah, I, it, it's, I mean, again, a serendipitous, um, a serendipitous issue in many ways in that, you know, I've been involved with shareable for six or seven years. Um, and we started Cities at Tufts just doing it with Tufts students. And then I think a couple of chance conversations with, you know, yourself, with Neil, um, really opened my eyes to the possibility that this could be more of a partnership approach um, and that, that there are opportunities in that to, you know, to bring in more activists, more um, people who are not necessarily urban planning academics or students, but who could use, you know, ideas about gentrification, ideas about all of these uh, different kinds of issues that we, we're discussing. I, I think, you know, and I, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I, I'm sure you would agree, Tom. I think we are developing the finest archive of critical, underrepresented voices who need to be heard, especially by um, activists planning students, planning other planning academics. Um, and what Shareable has brought through its media savvy that we don't necessarily have is, is a, a much extended audience potential, if you like. Um, you know, I would say, and you probably have the data, but probably at least half of our audiences are brought in by, uh, by Shareable and its networks. Yeah, and that's through that's been made possible by the, you know, you speak to the archive, the fact that we are doing a human edited transcript of every single lecture and making that available to the public, that we are being able to to take the the live lectures and turn them into full length and short clip videos um, that we're able to create podcasts that people can listen and also do visual content, looking at the, the talks as a whole and, and kind of summarizing the points down into graphic recordings so that we can really meet uh, many different types of learners and that we can uh, find people that would be interested in this type of content um, on many different channels by translating the lectures in all the different ways that we are it's made a i think a, a really big difference and and it's and like you said it's you know we are able to bring in lots of um organizers activists people on the ground and the larger international network that of of readers and practitioners that shareable is a part of um it, 
is a kind of a, a great example of the types of people that are showing up to, to participate in this series. I'm kind of wondering kind of now that you said we, this is the, the sixth semester that mm. this program has, has gone on and, you know, the, the next year is, is in development. What are kind of, how would you like to see this program evolve over time? Well, I think um, it's evolved over these six semesters, these three years, um, in exactly the way we wanted to evolve it. It has gained traction. Um, our speakers are uniformly excellent um, and experts in their field. I want to keep on doing more of that, um, raising up junior voices, obviously bringing in um, you know established voices as well but just really keep on doing more and more get reaching into different um, aspects of um, uh, urban planning issues if you like I mean you know obviously hot topics gentrification reparations these are hot topics but there are other topics out there um, that we that we can can look to as well We've had a pretty good coverage, but, you know, I'm always on the lookout for the next generation of, uh, of, of, of potential speakers. And, you know, it's not, it's not uncertain that I won't use some of the earlier speakers um, to come back and talk about the work they're doing now, three years on, if you like. <laughs> and kind of as we wrap up this conversation... Um, you know, now that, you know, you are the chair of the department, this is one of your flagship programs, you know, as, as chair, um, kind of, how are you feeling about your own career and kind of, as you get towards the twilight, uh, now as an elder statesman in, in the urban planning, uh, space, um, what would you, what would you like to look back on and, and be able to measure your impact? Well, I don't look back, Tom. I just keep looking forward. Um, and, you know, I've got so many projects and so many ideas uh, for the future in terms of new, new books, new, new additions to the book series that I'm series editor of, um, new ideas for articles and directions for local environment, the International Journal of Justice and Sustainability that I was co-founder of nearly 30 years ago and I'm editor-in-chief of. Um, so, uh, I don't take my legacy lightly and, and obviously I am at this time, you know, thinking about legacy issues, but I think with the impacts that I've had in so many aspects from writing to growing a department, to editing a journal, to being series editor of two, uh, very well received book series. And now the, you know, the co-archivist of uh, cities at Tufts and developing a, a, a brilliant archive. You know, I'm, I'm looking back um, in a way that simply drives me forward more, realizing, you know, we're doing the right thing. We've hit the mother load. Let's, let's mine it for all it's worth. And that's, that's what I intend to do. All right. Well, thanks so much, Julian. It was great getting to kind of dive into the the history, your personal history, but also the history of this program at Cities at Tufts and and some of the highlights and kind of where things are things are at and where they're going. I think that was a a, a really kind of important way for people to get a better idea sure. about why it is that this program exists and what we're hoping to achieve. Yeah, absolutely, Tom. And again, thanks, thanks. You know, on behalf of Tufts University for the the great partnership we've had with Shareable on this and the Bar Foundation, the Kresge Foundation uh, and p potential future funders. Um, we couldn't have done this. We couldn't have had this reach um, and impacted this number of people without, um, without the assistance that we've had. So it's, it's a great partnership and let's keep it going. All right. We'll see you again next semester. All right. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Hi. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You can access the podcast, transcript, and graphic recordings of my conversation with Julian on shareable.net. There's a direct link below. 
This was our final episode of the year. After a short break, we'll be back in January with a full slate of new lectures during our spring semester. Cities at Tufts Lectures is produced by Tufts University and Shareable with support from the Kresge, Barr, and Schiff Foundations. Please hit subscribe, leave a comment, and share this video with others so this knowledge can reach people outside of our collective bubbles.